Hello everyone, good evening to all of you. Hope everyone's doing well. We are going to be breaking down what's been happening in the Pokemon space as well as elsewhere. So let's get started. So Pokemon Worlds 2024 has started in Honolulu, Hawaii and um, kind of started on Thursday, but Friday as well as the weekend will be kind of the bulk of all the activities and all the different matches across the TCG, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Unite, and of course the video games. Um, there is a much more limit to who could attend on the TCG side of things. Earlier, many, many months ago, they actually announced this jump from 350 championship points needed to enter as a TCG player, that jumped all the way to 600. And back then, a lot of people were um, giving some dismay to that. It turned down a lot of people who would be competing or would have the um, drive to go and compete. However, a lot of people gave it their all since last World Championships and a ton of people, more than a few hundred actually went and attended. So that's 600 championship point increase early on to the road of Pokemon Worlds was kind of a little bit of a hiccup, but it looks like we have some very interesting matches to um, talk about in the next coming days. So fortunately, there's some fiascos going on at the Pokemon Worlds in Hawaii. Um, kind of dealing with the pop-up Pokemon Center. So the Pokemon Center merch for Worlds features a ton of like um, kind of tropical Pokemon, Pokemon that would be having fun at the beach. So you have Riolo, Pikachu, Azumarill, all of these fun Pokemon, Squirtle, um, included some really interesting merch. Um, there's some ukulele that were sold. They had a Pokemon design on them. Um, deck boxes, the usual mats. Um, a ton of Riolu centered merch. Some of these kind of uh, little cute Riolu plushies. Um, a lot of things sold out, unfortunately, and we had a lot of cases of hoarding as well as price gouging. And a lot of these fans took their dismay to Twitter. So we had a lot of cases of people going in and just figuring out where all these problems are happening. There were no limits, purchase limits to any of the merch. So we had an influx of people coming in there. They found empty shelves and all of these other uh, discrepancies. One of them would be this double duck box that was being sold for 13 bucks at the Pokemon Center. And it became $70 plus according to um, sellers listing the Rob 006. There are also entire inventories of TCG products and bundles of shelves of non-limit items that were going for $1,250, another person's reporting here, according to Sailor Sphinx. There is also a, this Bear Walker 2024 skateboard that was apparently one of the exclusive new items there. And there's this um, relisting someone found for 789 so kind of steep on the price there. Um, there's a lot of accusations of price gouging and hoarding, of course. There are some callbacks to the Van Gogh Museum, and when they had those Pikachu Van Gogh cards, those were flying off, literally flying, because there are people flying in there, and there's even like a, a mini altercation there. Some people got a little bit physical at the Van Gogh Museum several months ago, Simply Average Gamer on Twitter posts out how the out-of-stock shelves cleared by hoarding and gouge, um, the gouging of sales online, it kind of reminds him and PR Guitar Man of those Van Gogh incidents where we had just horrible courtesy towards the um, staff at the venue as well as to other people who are just there in the store. You're causing all these insane, like, um, out of hand chaotic events where it's just a bunch of, you know, all these, sh all this shouting and fighting. It's like, oh my goodness, they're, they're causing a ruckus in the museum. And it kind of reminded some people about that horribly, um, handled event. Matthew 
Matt Hero 21 posts a bed covered with merch, including several of those dock deck boxes that were being um, sold at a much higher price than the MSRP. And there's, of course, no limits, so a bunch of these people bought the entire shelves. We have photos of just cleared inventories and whatnot. Matt Hero 21 posted a bed covered with all the this merch, including deck boxes. Clips Z616 feels that taking the merch away from others to enjoy their time at the events isn't the move to go. And this echoed throughout many of these spaces. You see people calling these people out on their supposed hoarding and price gouging of the merch, making it unavailable for people in the store who actually went there and attended, and now they're racking up the prices online. Same thing is happening with um, some of the chase cards. You all see this happen. And then you also saw this happen again. The Van Gogh Museum. Horrible, horrible callback to that. That was a mismanagement again with the supply of the merch and then also just the unru unruliness on the um, fan side of things because that was not how you handle it. They were going ballistic over just merch and a lot of physical um, incidents actually happened at the Van Gogh Museum and it was very um, unruly. So a lot of callbacks to that. Legacy Music, M-U-S-I-K, wrote that if hate wanted to be avoided, Matt here, 21, could have just been silent about all of this. Couldn't have posted anything at all, but they posted it with all of this merch that they cleared the shelf with. And if only they kept it silent, they had a post that they were talking about getting stuff for friends, which is a very nice thing to do. But then the same post, Ray, Ray Yim, found out that um, there's some people claiming that the these resellers were preying on people's hobbies and making things inaccessible for them and families. There are some that are saying those people aren't the bad guys and they shouldn't feel bad for the broke people and they should just line their pockets with the love of actual fans, which is to Ray, Rayum's um, point of view, that is kind of an insane take, as they say. This is, again, what we've always seen in the TCG since the pandemic, and it's just spiraling out of control. We saw, again, the Van Gogh Museum incident, and now here it's unfortunate that this is happening. Table 500 TCG leaves us with this statement just because it's allowed doesn't mean it's right and I think that's a very good golden rule to going forward at these events the poster believes that they could price gouge the board to you if the price is right again just a kind of shady statement there table 500 TCG believes that there's some um, foul play in this you know there's always there's a ton of this controversy happening right now. Averster Lau says only hoarders care about the cost. The trip is supposed to be about enjoying the convention, speculating and spectating the matches, and to soak the atmosphere of just everyone coming together as a community with true fans. And that is actually a very important take that I think it's being forgotten in a ton of these um, Pokemon spaces as well as other um, online fandoms like in Marvel and DC but of course we're talking about Pokemon we have a huge problem here and a huge controversy when it came to the handling of the merch there was a, there weren't any um, purchase limits there were people just clearing the shelves and then um, price gouging allegedly according to these users who were there and some sleuths online I know <laughs> sleuths online ooh it's thing but a lot of these people are coming forward with stories about this whole fiasco and that is powerful I think you're supposed to be there to enjoy the the um, event the championships you are supposed to be soaking in the atmosphere with all the other true fans as they put it and then you have people wondering oh can I make a quick buck if I get all of these things I I think we also have to go back to table 500's quote here just because it's allowed doesn't mean it's right.
if there are people that are just honestly wanted to get, you know, some memento of the place and now they can't because it's either out of stock or they are now forced to go online on a reseller and pay um, much higher than they would even even just twice the price now there's that board the skateboard 789 and then the deck boxes from 13 to 70 bucks it's it's very unreasonable in the eyes of these people and so they're calling on some changes hopefully in the space in the communities that hey we need to keep an eye on this happening future in the future and hopefully you know vote with your wallets don't don't give in to the resellers um just hopefully you know everyone will chill and everyone will be able to enjoy the events some good news now about the um pokemon worlds the pokemon company did hand out free water to all the guests in the attendance who are waiting in line to check into the pokemon center so at the pokemon center i i understand it from people who were actually there and i talked to um you have these time slots you have to sign up for these time slots on thursday friday saturday or sunday however of course the ones on saturday and sunday and even starting i think like friday morning um the unfortunate thing happened where a ton of things were already out of stock however you had like these time slots to sign up for that was the main point of that it is of course warm in the tropics in hawaii and so the pokemon company did hand out free water to everyone so that was very nice of them very kind um to fans and it shows this community thing that unfortunately we need to keep reviving here and there um because of you know, all the controversy that's happening with all of the resellers that we talked about and then just some just some um controversies in general that are happening every now and then. But that last line here where we could come together as a community and we're supposed to be soaking in the atmosphere, enjoying each other's company and making memories and also um helping each other out like what um some of these people online being very inspiring and very um very encouraging of even their opponents in the matches very nice to see that again sportsmanship is sportsmanship never died that's very good that's very good um that's the correct message and yeah the pokemon community looks like we have some hurdles here again with worlds sometimes um things happen during these big events where you have these controversies and then but um, there's always things to come together, and I think that's a very important um, take to leave that section with. Okay, so let's go to the matches themselves, video games. So you had the unique Iron Hand set. Um, someone posted, I don't know how people get these sets already. These, um, what are they called? The teams, the v the pace of the teams and stuff like that. I don't know who's, who's going in there, and then I guess they're watching all the person's matches and then, you know, writing their stuff down. There's also use of a Terra Fairy Pachirisu. Now, Pachirisu very famously, back in the 3DS games, it won a world championships on this person's team because they had some shenanigans where they were using um, Ion Deluge, that, uh, that attack, I believe, if I remember it correctly, but there's some people playing around with a Terra Fairy Pachirisu this time at world championships, which is fun. Um, the TCG side. Okay, so this is this is a doozy. Ogre Pond has flooded the meta. Twenty four percent of the decks are Reggie Drago Ogre Pond, and then you also have a other percentages of Charizard. Um, you have Lugia. You have Gardevoir. Gardevoir is still relevant, but only nine percent of the decks. Thirteen percent for a Charizard deck for variants of Quad Thorns is also in play too. So that one deck you see online that's just four quad thorns and all these other uh, shenanigan cards that's out there as well. Um, this is the last call for Snorlax stall. You know, F cards are going to be rotated out and in the coming year or so. And yeah, this is the last time to play Snorlax stall. It's a very controversial deck because you're winning um, by having the opponent burn all their resources. So it's again i like to call back to table 500 tcg's quote is just 
it's just ringing true here for a lot of people where just because it's allowed doesn't mean it's right a lot of people are, are always on online talking about the snorlax stall and it's a very frustrating deck according to all of these people to play against because it's again a stall deck and you're just burning your resources this is however probably the last time you'll see it at worlds because again all these regulation f cards are going to be rotated out very soon in the coming year other percentages to note there was i think a three percent of some other decks that you would think that were big because of on tcg online there are a ton of them i think that was the snorlax souls three percent again charizard was 13 percent still very prevalent we actually have a deck list of a world players charizard deck that's been um written up by someone who's been watching the matches meticulously i'll put that into the description of the video if anyone wants to try it out and test it online okay pokemon unite we had this tier list of all the pokemon unite stuff um leafeon eldegoss trevenant umbreon blaziken urshifu as usual um Antillian and mew as well as Zeraora and scyther so we got the thundercats in here um Zeraora is there scyther um also a very good speedster to play as in usage in the um unite scape right now unfortunately gardevoir talonflame and buzzwool kind of dropped to the lower end of usage therefore lesser win rates during these pokemon unite matches that have been happening so advice i guess play as leafeon aldegoss trevenant umbreon blaziken urshifu Antillian, mew zero or scyther in your online matches all righty and yeah, farewell to Gardevoir, Talonflame, and Buzzwool, it looks like. So those weren't used as much. Um, Trevenant, again, very nice defender Pokemon. Umbreon on the defender side as well. Or Shifu, again, just wrecking things out there. We remember last year we saw a ton of Shifu. Okay, other news. Okay, so now we're going to our politics section. 80-ish days till the U.S. election. That concludes our politics section. Okay, so in Waymo, we had a robo-taxi jam in San Francisco. It was early in the morning, late at night. You had all these self-driving taxis out in San Francisco in this, like, parking lot. And they kind of got into a traffic jam of their own making. So, of course, the driverless cars were all just in the parking lot. And they started getting a little angry at each other. The Waymo robo-taxis all started honking waking up everyone nearby and of course who doesn't want that you know i love being startled in the middle of the night or early in the morning by beautiful car horns going off constantly also because they are just getting more angry and angry <laughs> um no it's it's probably um probably like a weird you know weird glitch or something like that very unfortunate waymo's Robo taxis kind of woke up the whole <laughs> vicinity of all these people sleeping and then the car horns. Ah, no, that's 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 not fun at all. Um, let's talk about something that is kind of cool and interesting though. We have a, a mastodon skull that was found in Iowa and it was tested to um, for its date, you know, when when the mastodon skull was, you know, actually part of a mastodon or and just its age of it, and it was found to be um, 13,600 years old, so, yeah, wow. <laughs> very, very interesting find there in Iowa. And then in Oregon, this is our last story that we're going to be touching on very briefly here. There was a, an alleged hack of all these Powerball billboards out on the highways and on the interstates in Oregon. And so, a lot of speculation online, these popped up with a, a gif of a cat i think playing with another like person like you know in the in a cartoon you know like so um so with that being said someone on reddit found it when they're driving when they're driving on the highway and i think it's the furries who did this and it's a pretty it's pretty interesting gif it's it's um it's very welcome surprise, I think, by most of the people on Reddit who 
came across it themselves actually driving to work there's a person who's driving to work and they look up oh what's that that's that's different i didn't see that before it was the it was the gif of like the um the cat the anthropomorphic um cat people like hanging out in the gif or something like that but yeah it seems like most people are it's a welcome surprise to them a nice change of pace i guess on their commute so yeah it brought some laughs i think it's a smiles here and there on on reddit so yeah furry billboards in oregon with the power bowl on them you have the mastodon skulls and then you have people going going um crazy at worlds with charizard and ogre pond reggie drago v star you know all those good things there it was there's a ton of these like pokemon ukuleles floating around um yeah very interesting few days especially with the pokemon world stuff hopefully um more interesting stuff happens and yeah that's about it thanks so much for tuning in please do something nice for someone and have a good one take care thank you so much again for tuning in